In this episode, we're going to look at three of the smallest Walkmans that Sony made. These use regular compact cassettes, not micro cassettes or mini cassettes, but regular cassettes. They are the smallest ones Sony ever offered. I have three of them here. Let's take a look. I thought it might be kind of fun to look at three of the smallest Sony Walkmans ever made. Okay, here we have the Walkman the WM-10. This was a breakthrough Walkman, as in it's exactly the same size as a cassette tape. It's the same width as a cassette tape in its case. It's the same size as a cassette tape in its case. Cassette player uses a flat Disc, or it's a belt drive, but it's what they call, it's a three-phase brushless slotless motor, a BSL motor. Its brother is the WM-F10, which is the same size, but it's a little thicker, right? It's a little bit thicker than a cassette. You can see that this one here is the same size as a cassette. This one's a little bit thicker than a cassette, and it added an AM FM radio and it added Dolby noise reduction I think this one had Dolby 2 if I'm not mistaken yeah this one had Dolby Dolby B and this one here is the WM F100 unfortunately one of the the, the piece that goes over here that's got the the, uh, the frequency um, label on it it was just stuck on with tape double-sided tape and it's fallen off and i i don't know where it is i don't know if you even got it i don't know if this one works or not i don't know if any of these work actually this was an am fm cassette player with as you can see auto reverse and they are pretty bloody small there you see this one here and they made it even smaller because this is these other ones you have to pull them out this one here you can see here's your two capstan shafts and there's the playback head again a BSL motor It'll be interesting to see if these work and these are actually quite valuable these days because they are you know relatively rare especially this auto reverse one the WMF 100 mark 2 these other ones here to go to tape and you actually had to open them up and then the tape went in like that worked around on a single double-a battery this one here you could operate it as a radio with it closed it has a little cutout around the headphone jack you can see this one here the headphone jack can't be inserted if it's closed because it's just a player this one here you could use it as a radio and if you wanted to use it as a tape player you just open that up and the tape went in there I don't know if these work or not I'm gonna get a battery we'll load this thing up we'll see whether these things actually work if they don't might be worth taking them apart and seeing if I can get them working. They're a belt drive, so chances are the only thing that's going to be wrong with these is a belt that's shot. Right, but uh, we won't know until I actually get into it to check it. I even have the original headphones that came with one of these ones. I think this other one up here, I've got another headset, I think it's the same. Let me check this out as I drop stuff. Yeah, here's another one. Here's another headset, right? These ones here would have come with, one of these ones came with the F10, and the other one came with the Walkman 10. And these, they're both the same, I think. What are these? Uh, MDR W10, and what is this one here? Dynamic Headphones MDR W30. So MDR W30 and MDR W10. The MDR W10, that was with the Walkman 10. So th this headset here would have come with these, both of these ones. I don't know about the other one. But anyway, they were really good sounding headphones. They were the first of what they called the earbud type, but they had a band so they didn't fall off your head. So really like these. Let me find a battery. We'll see if either, if any of these actually work. Yeah, I do have a new battery here, a brand new one. So I'll put this battery in and see whether this thing does anything. Oh, I can hear the motor trying to start. I bet you the belt is turned to goo. Take a close listen. Yeah. The, uh, the rubber band on this thing is going to be shot. So we'll tear this one apart and take a look at the, the band on it. Let's just try the next one. We'll try 
the Walkman F10, which is this one here. Now, due to problems that they had with the battery compartment on the Walkman 10, they took away that little tab that you had to pull in because people broke that off and they went with a more traditional um, battery compartment on this one. Now, this one, if I put it into radio, this one actually should work if I put it into radio. Let's see if I can tune anything on here. I got to plug the headphones in, I believe, again. And this one's not lighting up battery, so. Um, this one may have a problem too. Probably all three of them are probably broken. Don't hear any any noise whatsoever. Let me just check the battery terminals and make sure that uh, we're not looking at corrosion on here. Because this one had a battery in it for a while. Although it wasn't showing any signs of leakage, that doesn't mean that there's not some crud on the battery terminals. We'll just see if it'll turn on in tape mode. Oh, that's kind of loose, that jack. That might be part of the problem right there. Because if I'm not mistaken, there's a switch on this one as well. So we'll have to take this one apart as well. So a zero for two. Will I get lucky with the other one, with the DD or the D100? I think it's D100 Mark II. Will we get lucky with the D100 Mark II? See, these will be units I'll take apart, but the battery goes into there like that, and then this snaps on like that. We'll plug in the headphones and see whether this thing makes any noise. Um, Where's radio? Radio. Let's see if the radio is going to produce any sound. Oh, the radio actually is. I can hear hissing. I'm just going to put the headset on here. See if I can get any music. It's not tuning anything in. This has got to be the AM FM switch right here. I'll see if I can flip this and see if I can get anything on the AM band. Ah! I got sound! AM's working. Cool. Well, this thing's got a bit of life. That tells me that the DC to DC converter's working. Let's see if the FM band will work. Yes, the FM band is working. Here we go. I guess you guys can probably hear that. That's my little test transmitter. So, um, we've got some sound off the radio. So. That's a good sign. That means that the DC to DC converter inside this unit is working. Now, will it move the tape reels? No. I'm assuming that the uh, oh, I gotta have the I think I gotta have the headphones plugged in because there's a switch in there. Remember? Will anything try to move? Nothing's trying to move. You can hear the motor trying to run. Hmm. I wonder if we can uh, take the back off this beast and just take a look. Look inside. So to open these things up, you need to use your special tools. You unscrew the, the knob. That has to come off first. And you lift off the, the volume knob. And then you remove the screws from the back. And I'm sure that the little belt is probably 
there's nothing left of it. They were pretty common to fail on these. And I bet all three of them the belt is toast. What would be interesting is if I can still find a belt for one of these things today. Yeah, see the belt is the belt is turned to mush. Here it is. The belt is completely toast, but you see. It's quite a long thin belt. I don't know if a rubber band would do the job on this or not. I don't think uh, boiling this belt is going to do anything for it. Might. But um, if I hit the power button now, I bet the motor will spin. There it goes. Motor's spinning. Amazing, huh? Totally amazing. This belt might be worth just seeing what happens if I boil it and see whether. I don't think it's going to do anything because it's um, it's pretty like bad. So I don't think we're going to get anything out of this. But the chances of finding one of these long, thin little belts like this is uh, going to be very difficult. I might be able to string a rubber band around here just to make the thing kind of work. Just to show you guys if I can find a, a, a thin elastic band. I might try just stringing one around just to see what happens because I, I think the chances of getting one of these belts at this stage of the game is going to be very difficult. I could be wrong, but it uh, might be worth checking out to see if I can find one. But let me see if I can find an elastic band that I can stretch around there and just see if I can make it work. I can just see it now. I'm going to get a whole shitload of thumbs down because I'm going to put a rubber band in here, but I don't think it's going to work. But I just want to see if we thread around this thing. It's probably way too small too. A little stretch, right? Go around the pulley here. I'm gonna go around this pulley. These uh, original belts were really, really thin. Go around that pulley, and I gotta go around this pulley here. I go around like that, and then around here. <laughs> yeah, man. They certainly didn't make it easy. Around the pulley, around the belt, around the first capstan. First capstan shaft, around the other capstan shaft here. When you get it in, it kind of looks like that. And then when I press play, will it turn? Probably not, because yeah, it's too tight. There it goes. That's kind of how it's supposed to turn. If I press the reverse button, it should click this little solenoid, or actually, actually I think it's mechanical on this, but it should flip this little gear here, and it should, this should engage. It's supposed to go like that. Oh yeah, this little lever is sticking. But that's how that, that flips anyway. This flips up and kicks this gear in. It's sticking. But anyway, that's how that works. We'll try putting a tape in this thing and just see whether I get any sound out of this thing. That would be cool. If I get some sound out of this thing. Okay, it's not going to go the right speed, obviously, because because I don't have the right belt on there. But <laughs> this thing works. If I were to get the correct belt for this thing, this thing would work like a champ. Hmm. It's almost worth trying to boil that belt and see whether that belt is salvageable. What do you guys think? Maybe I'll try and find one of these belts. Um, for this one, 
we're going to set this one aside for now because I don't have a belt for it. And I don't think, well, you never know. I'd like to see whether I can actually get anything out of this other one that doesn't work, the Walkman F10. It'd be interesting to see whether I can get this one to put out any, any type of sound. Oh, I got something. I just heard the motor try to start. I bet you the belt shot on this one too. Uh, radio. I do believe that the radio just came on. It might be that my battery is not in properly. I have a stinking suspicion on this one, it's just that my battery is not in properly. I'm not making a good connection. You've definitely heard something there. Maybe the contact is needs to be bent over a bit to give it a little bit more tension. AMFM switch is not doing anything. It's probably broken. Ladies and gentlemen. But that's working. Okay. What about the tape transport? Sounds like we have a belt problem on this one too. Doesn't it? Only one way to find out. We we'll remove the screws off of this one and take a look at the belt. See what shape the belt is in on this one. See, these are where these special Walkman screwdrivers come in handy, is uh, for taking these little pieces of crap apart. And I don't miss having to fix this crap. Forget what comes off on this. I think I gotta take the back off on this one if I'm not mistaken. <sighs> these were terrible, these things. Right, can I peel it? I might be able to peel this off. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, the belt on this one is not existent, you see. The belt is just melted. There's nothing left of this belt. It's gone to it's turned to goo. switches have fallen out too. These little switches that go on the top here have all come out. This other one we got before the belt got that bad. So this one here, the belt is melted on it. And I was trying to get what, what remains of the belt out of the groove here. But uh, I don't hold much hope that I can put anything else in here. I'd have to get the right belt for it. And that would be a challenge, I think. We'll pull the other one apart too and just remove its belt if it's whatever's remaining on it because 
if it hasn't turned to goo, it's going to, and uh, it's just going to make matters worse. I doubt very much whether I will be trying to get a belt for these things. I'll look and see whether I can find any, but I think the chances of getting one is uh, pretty remote. Just because they haven't made these things in forever. At least getting one from Sony would be possible see this belt would have gone around this pulley and then around this idler and then underneath this plate how we used to put these belts in is we used to thread them underneath here and and uh, use a piece of wire. We'd get a fine piece of wire, we'd slide it underneath here with a little hook on the end. We could use that to pull the belt back in. But uh, the belt shot on this one, I'm not even going to bother trying to uh, replace it because I know I don't have one. But we know what the problem with this one is. Radio works on FM, doesn't work on AM, that's because the little switch is broken up here. It switches it. And uh, that's another one that's, we'll put it back together for now. Now they got this crap over my hands. We have to put these uh, switches back in here. How does this go in? Uh, it goes around the play button. It's actually supposed to be in here. It's fallen out. Right. Double-sided tape is, they've got in here is let go. But that goes in like that. The switches fit into they fit into the cabinet and then they drop into the the board after the fact these three switches go into the cabinet they're a pain they're always a pain in the ass to work on these things the switches go in here like this And then you got to try and hold the, the cover in at the right angle and then put the, the unit in to it like this. Kind of set it into the cabinet. Like that. And line up the switches. There, the switches are lined up. Okay, now I can put the screws back in. See, wonderful, wonderful technology, right? sure it's lined up properly here. Not quite. Back together. That's one. One back together. I wonder if it's worth just taking a look at this other one and seeing whether it is uh, the belt is toast on this too. I'm sure that this one, the belt is also probably turned to mush. Positive the belt's turned to mush on this. I'll tell you, when these were uh, around, these were the coolest players. They also gave us as servicers the biggest bloody bunch of problems because uh, they uh, they were so small that 
you know, someone would drop one and they'd just get just totally trashed. Just one drop and the thing would literally would fall apart. i take out these two screws in the end here on this one to open this up. comes off like that and then this back should peel off of this get the screws out there the back should just lift peel off like this and yeah the, the belt is the belt is trying to mush on this one too you can see that there's nothing left of it so So I'll just remove the remnants of the belt and uh, put the unit back together. Same with the other one. I'll put it back together without the belt in it because there's no point in putting that bad belt back in. It's just going to deteriorate even more. Um, but these were kind of cool though because they had a BSL motor. Look at how flat this little motor is. It's just, just, just a completely flat motor. It's uh, pretty incredible. They uh, had a motor drive IC over here. Right, this is a direct drive motor. It has a three-phase motor in it. So the here's your motor speed controls here, and um, this generates a three-phase signal, which goes to the three-phase coils: one phase, two phase, three phase, and then this one here was I think that was your frequency generator. Had a feedback loop, so whenever the motor rotate, because you need a you need a FG, right? You need a frequency generator. Um, I think it was actually common phase one phase two phase three and then you had uh, the two frequency the two um, hall effect sensors because um, what you need on here is you need to you need to know the position of the motor as it turns so it's it rocks it so that it can detect what phase it's at and then it starts the rotating field which will then make the motor spin it's um it's very cool i mean this was there was there was no other walkman made that used this type of technology and it was it was f so cool that the way that they made these units work if I could find a belt or something I could put in there to make this as a belt this one's not in as bad a shape as the F10 uh, because the pulleys aren't all gummed up like the other ones uh, if I could find a something I could put in there as a belt just to see if I could make this thing work that would be great anyway I'm gonna put this thing together because uh, without a belt for it it's not going to do anything I may uh, see if I can find one for either this one or the the uh, F100 and see whether I can get these working or get one of them working it would be really be cool if I could get even this one here the F10 was a, a nice little player if I could get one working that would be it would be swell I'll uh, take a look and see whether I can find the proper belt for one of these and uh, see if I can get it going because I think that would be pretty cool if I could get one of these very very slim walkmans up and running Then the top cover, we pull this back out like that, and the top cover just goes in. It fits in the edge here. There's a little spacer that goes in here, right over the over the um, dial here, and then that just goes on. 
and the screw goes in the back. Just like that. Okay, that one's bad together. This other one, as I said, I'm going to uh, leave this mess out because this belt is in the same deterioration state. If I put that belt back in there, guaranteed it's going to melt. So I'm going to leave that one out. I'll put the back back on this thing. All three of them are uh, back together. Put the battery cover back on this one here. There you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the look at three microscopic vintage Walkmans, the smallest Walkmans that Sony ever made. Thanks for watching.